That's right. Room 215, name of Davenport. No, he hasn't returned. That's right. Yes, sir. bucks for 25% of a fighter like Big Boy, man. Think about it. What do you got to lose? A thousand bucks, Max. You gotta be kidding. You know what the Gazette's calling him? The Great White Hope. Yeah? Yeah. Nicky Pearl, you're looking at the next champ. You murdered Johnson. <laughs> What are you doing? But have a look, Max. You mean you, you're, you're going in? I'm not good at investing in a fighter until I find out if he can punch. punch.
What are you doing here, Rox? I've got a message for you. Gonna have to wait, Rox. Nick, it's important. Gonna have to wait. Nick! Hey, Memphis. Can I have a round with this guy here? Yeah, sure. All right? Okay? I'm listening. It's about Sam Bates. What about Sam Bates? He's dead. <clears throat> Nick! Nick. S Sam's dead? Oh, no. You know how we can contact his family? You, you have. You? That's not as much as uh, he had. Nick, I'm so sorry. You know, it's funny about Sam. When I was a kid in Five Points, he was the toughest cop in harness. He never got a scratch. Somebody pumps a couple of slugs into him. When did it happen? What? When did it happen? Oh, yeah. Corner says a couple of weeks ago. Some wino found him in the cellar. Making tenement on the tenderloin. That, uh... Puts it on Captain Keller's doorstep. Well, that's it, Carter. You know as much about it as we do so far. I may know a little more, Keller. Last time I saw Sam Bates was about three weeks ago. He told me he was working for Freddie Duncan. From what I hear, just about every private dick in town is working for Freddie Duncan at one time or another. Did you also hear the story about Freddie Duncan blowing up one night at the Shame O'Keen and threatening to kill his wife if she ever left him? Now look, Carter. And he I... pulled the same act at Wreckers on another night. Yeah, I've heard all that. Ivy Duncan disappeared about two weeks ago. About the same time Sam was killed. And you think there's some connection? I think I'd like to know if there is or not. Wouldn't you, Keller? I already do. There isn't. Ivy Duncan left town with a guy she knew when she worked at the plush horse. That's Tucker's place across the street. A guy named Lloyd Dean. How do you know that? I know Freddie's brother, Neil. Helped with the police charity fund. He asked me as a personal favor to find out what happened to her. And you did? She and Lloyd Deems took the Western Limited to Chicago the same day she left Freddie. I've got the names and addresses of five people who were on that train and identified them. Here, check them out yourself. I know you and Bates went back a long way, Carter. Clear back to five points. But don't forget, he was still just a two-bit peeper. You give me ten minutes, and I could probably name a dozen guys who had a reason to pump those slugs into him. Yeah, Keller, but only one of them did. And you know I'm going to find him. Oh, Carter. Just be careful where you look. I got no use for Freddie Duncan. But any guy who's got a father who can match dimes with Rockefeller can buy an awful lot of muscle. What's the matter with you, Flo? 
think I need a drink. Maybe several. All right. What do you guys think I'm paying you for? Place! <laughs> I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Duncan. Who are you? Well, my name's Nick Carter, Mr. Duncan. I'm a private detective. I'm sorry, Carter. I don't need any more private detectives. That tramp that I married finally did me the favor of running off. I wanted to talk to you about Sam Bates. Who? Well, Sam Bates is a private detective, a friend of mine. Thought he was found this morning. He was killed about two weeks ago. Oh, I think I remember reading something about that in the newspaper this afternoon, but I don't see what it's got to do with me. Well, he was working for you at the time. No, he never worked for me. I never heard of him. You're a liar. Quiet! Quiet! What did you call me? I called you a liar! I thought I'd find you here. That's Sam and me. I was, uh, 15 years old. Nick, why did Sam quit the force? You got a bad habit, Roxy. You couldn't get over being a reasonably honest cop. Bye, he didn't mind a little. Honest graft, but he had a sergeant that was doing things he couldn't stomach. And he couldn't do anything about it. That sergeant's a captain now. Dan Keller. Oh, uh, Otis Duncan called. Otis Duncan? Did he say what he wanted? No, he didn't. Why don't you go on ahead and I'll uh, finish things up here. Nick Carter, to see Otis Duncan, please. Come in, please. Thank you. Carter, Mr. Duncan. Oh, come in, Carter. Get Neil and Freddie down here right away. Carter, this is Zimmerman. He passes himself off as a doctor. He tells me I've got two months to live. I'm going to make a liar out of him and do it in six weeks. Anything to avoid paying my bill. I'll see you this afternoon, Otis. You're a bandit. All right, let's get one thing straight, Carter. I don't like private detectives. That's right, Mr. Duncan. I don't like Robert Barnes. Well, that's fair enough. What happened at the push horse last night? Now you keep your mouth shut and that temper of yours under control. You know where you can go. Well, there they are. My devoted sons. One of them you know, the other's Neil. All right, sit down. Sit down. 
don't want you to hear this. And then we'll all understand one another. Carter, you were right. Freddy lied to you last night. Your man Bates was working for him at the time of my daughter-in-law's disappearance. She didn't disappear, Father. She... I'll do the talking. Our police captain, friend of Neil's, said that she went off with a man she knew before she married Freddy. I don't believe it, not for a moment. Father, you have no reason to... Sit down and shut up! What do you think happened to her, Mr. Duncan? That's what I'm hiring you to find out. Sorry. I'm busy. Carter, you went to the plush horse last night because you thought there was a connection between your friend's murder and the disappearance of my daughter-in-law. Well, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. But you want to know and I want to know. Well, here's a chance to find out and get paid for it at the same time. Any objections? There could be, yeah. I know exactly what you're thinking, Carter. Perhaps Ivy's dead. Perhaps Freddie murdered her. What happens then? That's right, Mr. Duncan. That's what I'm thinking. Then I want to see him hang. You can both go now. Oh, I was just beginning to enjoy this. Come along. All right. I don't really know what one's supposed to say in a situation like this, Carter. Mm. <laughs> Good hunting. I like Ivy Carter. That's more than I can say about anybody I ever knew, including those two. And she liked me. That's more than Freddie and Neil can say. Oh, I can't blame them. God knows I didn't give them very much to shoot at. Find her, Carter. Do you have any idea where she could be? No. What about money? Does she have any of her own? Well, she took the jewelry that Freddie gave her. Oh, that should amount to about $50,000. I wonder about Freddy. I told her not to believe the promises he made of how he'd change if she'd marry him. But she believed him and she married him. That was her trouble. She was too trusting. She saw the best in people. If I do find him, Mr. Duncan, you want to see her again? Yeah, but make it fast, Carter. There isn't much time. I'll do my best, Mr. Duncan. Oh, Carter. I'm sorry about your friend. You ought to make yourself real scarce around here. Tell me about Ivy Duncan, Flo. Oh, look, I know Sam was a good friend of yours, but I can't... He did a few favors for you, too, Flo. Yeah. And tell me about Ivy Duncan. Okay, she was a nice kid. Strictly seen? She didn't even know there was an upstairs to this joint. What about Lloyd Deems? Oh, Nick, have a heart. Bess comes out. I, I don't care about Bess, Flo. I asked you about Lloyd Deems. He was around. Ivy was around. If they had anything going, I sure didn't know it. And you can bet Bess didn't either. You know, she once found out that Lloyd was cheating on her. Well, about three years ago. She had him worked over, but good. He was in the hospital over two weeks. Lloyd's been a lapdog ever since. Bess owns him, huh? 
like she owns the chair you're sitting in. Well, how'd she take it when Deems took off with Ivy? That's the funny part about it. She didn't bat an eye. Hello, Mr. Carter. Hello, you have a friend waiting for you. See you around. Yeah, Flo, I'll see you around. Well, well, what are you doing here, Nick? You remember something you forgot to bust up last night? Uh, Bess, let me pay you. Freddie Duncan's already taken care of it. That's not the point, is it? Well, then what is? You're not welcome here. Not now, not ever. Bess, I just want to ask you... Oh, you know where the door is? Use it. Nice. No? not scared, brothers. No, no, not for one minute. He looked Satan right in the eye, and he said... He... Excuse me, brothers. Excuse me. Busy. Oh, the devil never sleeps. Struggle against sin never ends. <clears throat> Bless you, brother. Bless you. And now, uh, tell me, what, uh, what brings you to my humble refuge in this wilderness of iniquity? I'd like some information. The nature of which is what, brother? You know Lloyd Deems? Deems. Deemed. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Bess Tucker was his paramour. Oh, I know the sinner. Well, the story is that he left town with Ivy Duncan. That's who I heard. I find that hard to believe. I knew Ivy. Yes, she used to sing here for us on occasion. When she worked at the plush horse. Lovely, lovely girl. An uncommon flower to bloom in this desert of degradation. I have reason to believe that Deems didn't leave town. And if he did, he's back. Oh, yes, and uh, you would like me to make some inquiries? Bless you, brother. I will do my best. Uh, Brother Carter, if you were planning to make a little wager on something at Aqueduct tomorrow, I suggest River Jordan and the Pip. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Bless you.
Listen to Carter. What happened, Carter? Get jumped, did you? You ought to know better than come down here alone, late at night. the street as I was about to introduce myself to him. Two of your boys moved in and let him get away. Two of my men? Yeah, Archer and O'Hare. And you tell him this for me. If it ever happens again, I'm going to come down here and shove this pipe so far down their throat they're going to see daylight at both ends. What do you want? Report on a woman's body taken from the river tonight. Ivy Duncan has on. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, if I know Freddie Duncan, he had them especially made for. One of a kind. That's his style. Mm. What about them? I saw them tonight. Bess Tucker was wearing them. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. But how could she be wearing them? Unless she's seen Lloyd Dames since he supposedly left town with Ivy. And if she has seen him, that guy's in town. Nick. What? I'm scared. Well, why are you scared, Rox? What do you mean, why am I scared? After what happened to Sam Bates and, and what happened to you? Nick, those men wanted to kill you. Nah, I'm not sure. What's it going to take to convince you a state funeral? You better go home and get some sleep, Rox. Some sleep? Yeah, you're going to have a big day tomorrow, girl. Doing what? I want you to find out if there's anybody in this town that Ivy Duncan would trust enough to hide her from Freddie. You think she was that scared of him? Well, if she isn't, she should be. Okay. Good night. Good night. I should warn you, she isn't a pretty sight. Could anybody possibly identify her? Nobody could. But what difference does it make? Freddie took her word for it. But for your information, she isn't. Who is it? Who knows? Who cares? Look, Mr. Duncan, we fish maybe a dozen women out of that river every year. Nobody reports them missing, nobody claims their bodies. So they wind up in Potter's Field. Just so many Jane knows. Why do you have to? We've got a problem, Mr. Duncan. Your father made it for us when he hired Nick Carter. Now, I know Carter. When he gets his teeth into something, he doesn't let go. He doesn't buy the story that your sister-in-law ran off with Lloyd Deems. So the only way we can stop him from looking for her, and maybe finding her, is for Ivy to turn up dead. I don't like it. It's only going to confirm the suspicion that's already in some people's minds that Freddie might have killed her. I mean, it could lead to a murder charge against him. Now, don't you think I know that? But there's no problem there. Now that I've found Ivy's body, I know who killed it. Who? Lloyd Deems. Yeah, hello. Hello! Hallelujah, Harry here, Brother Carter. I've been making those inquiries on Deems. I may have some information for you. Hey, thanks, hallelujah. Right. We shall come rejoicing. 
Chun Ying, Hai Ji Khoi. Is there a Lloyd Dames registered here? To Yang Si, Gong Ming Bak. Anybody named Lloyd Dames? How about you guys? You speak English? Mo Cho. You speak English? Mm Hai. Mm Hai. Mo Cho. Let's keep your mouth shut. Chun Ying! Now, what room is he in? Two or oh, two. Who is it? Hong Sen. I'm a private detective. I want to talk to you about Ivy. I'm looking for Ivy Duncan. I don't know where Ivy is. In Chicago, maybe. I don't know. But that's where I left her about two weeks ago. Maybe she moved on. But it's truth. I don't know where she is now. And you can tell Freddy that. It's the honest to God truth. Up. Look, if Freddy Duncan finds me, he'll... Hey, relax. I'm not working for Freddy Duncan. Who are you working for, then? His father. What's he want to find Ivy for? Well, that's his business, isn't it? So he left Ivy in Chicago two weeks ago, huh? Yeah. Where? At the Lakeside Hotel. Why? About a week after I got there, I noticed this guy following us, and I figured he was a Johnny Ham that Freddy Duncan had hired. What does this guy look like? About, about your age and your build. So you left Ivy in Chicago a couple of weeks ago and you came back here to New York, huh? Yeah. Well, why here? I got friends there and I needed money and I figured I could raise some from them. By selling Ivy's jewelry. Huh? You heard me. No. You lied to me. I swear, I, no, I, never, I never touched Ivy's jewelry. Why his best friend of earrings. I don't know, I swear to God. Look, please. Carter, give me a break. Don't let, don't let Freddie Duncan home in town. I'm telling you, the guy's a maniac, please, okay? All right, Deems. On one condition. You stay right here, you stay put. Sure. But if you double-cross me, you're gonna wish Freddie Duncan had found you. Remember that. Okay, Carter. Hey, Carter. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Extra, extra, read all about it here. Extra, extra, read all about it. Extra here, extra here. Hey, Nick, you read the latest? Oh, come on, Billy. Nick. All right. Thanks. That's why. What about Carter? He found me. I don't know how, but he did. Oh, yeah. What'd you tell him? The Chicago story. I was lucky to remember it the way he came busting in on me. Keller didn't say anything about this. Oh, Lord, Lord. Go get Keller. I want to talk to him. I don't think I know Go where get to... him! Did 
Freddy do it, Carter? Don't talk about it now. I August. want to talk about it right now. You'd better go. Did Freddy kill her? I don't know. He might have. Or it might have been Lloyd Deems, but there's one thing I'm certain of. Well, neither one of them killed Sam Bates. How do you know that? Nothing. Two slugs and a man. That's not Freddy or Deems. Right now, Carter, I don't care who killed Bates. I do. Look, you're working for me. Find the man that killed Ivy. You better get yourself another boy. Huh? Ow! Wait. All right, Carter. You do it your own way. Now, just calm down, Lloyd. Calm down. There's nothing to get excited about. No? No. And I'll tell you why. The woman in the river was an ivy. I suppose I should apologize for the change in plans. But when I saw the coroner's report, I had the idea that it'd be better if Ivy was dead instead of being missing. But I had to move fast. So fast you forgot about the jewelry Ivy was carrying when she was supposed to have gone with me. Hmm. And now you're worried that somebody's going to think that you killed her to get the jewelry. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm worrying about. Well, you can stop. Tell me how. All you have to do is lie low for a few more days until I can pick somebody to pin Ivy's murder on. Who, for instance? We all in a drunk. We throw him in the tank. I drape a few pieces of Ivy's jewelry on him. And bang. The guy will never know what hit him. You make everything sound so easy, Keller. That's because it is easy. Now, you find a place to hold up and just relax. Everything's going to work out. How about that place of yours in the country, Bess? Quiet, nobody around. You could probably use some fresh air after that Chinatown flea bag. Nick, have you heard one thing that I've said? No. Hmm. Well, the only one that I could find that would have helped Ivy Duncan is a girl named Joyce Jordan. She's a singer in a show at the Hippodrome on Broadway. No, oh, she couldn't have been in Chicago. Joyce Jordan? No. Ivy Duncan. Not if she's been dead for two weeks. Hey, who's Joyce Jordan? Joyce Jordan is a girl that Ivy Duncan stayed with for a few months before she married Freddie Duncan. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Nick, do you remember telling me last night to find out if there was anybody that Ivy Duncan trusted enough to... Why did he tell that story? Why did who tell what story? Lloyd Deems. Why did he tell that story about going to Chicago with Ivy? If he did kill her for her jewelry, he'd be a fool to admit he even seen her. What has that got to do with Joyce Jordan? And, and, and what, what about Keller saying he couldn't find Lloyd Deems and Hallelujah Harry coming up with him? Just like that. I don't know. Deems would. But you don't know where he is right now, do you? No. But I got a pretty good idea Bess Tucker does. What do you think, Rex? Oh, I think it's perfect. Where do you think you're going? Oh, it's all right, mate. I'm going to talk to the lady of the house. She doesn't want to talk to you. How do you know if you haven't asked her? Beat it, Sale. I don't want any trouble. Nor do I, mate. So why don't you just hang around till I get back? <laughs> watch it, mates. Now you watch it. What's going oh. on here? Hank, what? He did it. He did it. Who are you and what do you want? I'm Blackie Leach. I'm looking for Lloyd Deems. Throw him out, fellas. Hold it. What do you want with Lloyd Deems? If you don't mind, lady, I think it's best that we talk about it in private. Uh, come on. What is it you want with Lloyd Deems? Nothing that money won't cure. You see, he was drinking and saying things about a certain lady. And now that she turned up round, what I know is worth something. You are bluffing. If I go to the coppers, it won't be the Keller. 
And if you don't know why, ask Lloyd. Wait, please. I won't be long. bushes and we'll take a closer look. Lloyd, stop lying to me now. I'm not. I swear I never heard of Blackie Leach. Bess, you think you could have been working for Nick Carter? I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Maybe could have been. Do you know what I think, Bess? That Keller's lying to us. Ivy didn't just hand him her jewelry. You don't know that. Yes, I do, and I think you do, too. I better go back to town. Bess. Don't you understand, Lloyd? It doesn't matter what you think Keller did or didn't do. You better believe what he tells you. Lloyd, I'm only doing what I think is best for both of us. You better go when you miss your train. Get up. 
Come on. Get in here. The lock was made to be picked. All right, you can get out the way you got in. Yes? I got some bad news for you. Lloyd Deems is dead. I don't believe you. It happened right after you left him. Archer and O'Hara killed him. I'm sure that Keller will give out the story that Deems was killed while resisting arrest for Ivy Duncan's murder. Best I was with him when he died. He told me he didn't kill Ivy Duncan. When I asked him who did, I think he tried to tell me it was Keller. Yes. Was it? Leave me alone. Would you please leave me alone? Was it color, Bess? Get out of here. Sam Bates. Eddie Duncan. Lloyd Deems. <laughs> three people dead, three people murdered. It won't stop there. Not if it was Keller. He can't stop. Bess, you know too much. Get out of here. Just get out of here. Either you get him, Bess, or he's going to get you. You make your mind up. Fast. <laughs> Come in, Beth. Sit down. I thought you might want these. I mean, you'll need all the evidence you can get to prove that Lloyd murdered a woman who isn't even dead. Oh, Beth. There was a guy with Lloyd last night. Really? I wouldn't know about that. But, Beth, you were there. Archer and I saw you leave. Huh? <laughs> I thought he was alone when I left him. You didn't uh, tell anybody where Lloyd was? No. Somebody like, say, uh, Nick Carter? Why would I tell Nick Carter? I'm not sure. That's what bothers me. I'm sorry that I'm not properly sympathetic at the moment. But I've got a hole at the bottom of my guts. I know how you feel, Bess. You liked Lloyd. I loved him. But you'll get over it. Thank you for telling me that. At least I hope so. You've got a good business and a nice life. I'd hate to see anything happen to them. You won't.
Nicholas Jordan. I'm Nick Carter. I'm a private detective. What do you want? Well, I'd like to talk to you about Ivy Duncan. Another one. Another what? Freddie Duncan Gumshoe. Can't he leave her alone even now? Does he still have to know whether she cheated on him or not? That guy's worse than a ghoul. Look, Miss Jordan. Out! You tell that dirty little creep to stay away from me. Leave me alone. Tell him I wouldn't cross the street to spit on him if he were on fire. Now beat it. Now look, Miss Jordan, you got this all wrong. Harry? I'm not working. Mac? Get him out of here. Relax, boys, just relax. It's a pleasure talking to you. Miss Jordan. Oh, come in, Mr. Carter. What can I do for you? Well, I was just at the morgue, Doctor. I wanted to see Ivy's body. They told me it was released to a private undertaker. Yes, the funeral's this afternoon, I understand. Private ceremony. Was she a patient of yours, Doctor? Why do you ask? Well, I was just wondering if she had any identifying marks, like a, you know, birthmark scar or something like that. What are you saying, Carter? That you don't think the body is Ivy's? Humor me. Very well, Carter. I might be of help. I attended Ivy once. It was for a broken wrist. A broken wrist? Hmm. Still at it? <clears throat> yes. Yes, uh, after all, this is a big day in my life. The car is waiting. You know, I've been thinking, Neil, as the practicing hypocrite in the family, you should be the one to bury Ivy. What is this all about? I just don't want to intrude, that's all. Intrude? Well, knowing how you felt about Ivy, I want you to be the one to have the last minute along with her. Now, what are you talking about? Now, come on, Freddy, ask you a Stop question. Stop it, Neil! You know exactly what I'm talking about. You were in love with Ivy. Didn't you think I knew that? <sighs> You're drunk. Of course I'm drunk! What's that got to do with it? Drunk or sober, I'm an expert on men being in love with Ivy. There were hundreds of them. And in that sewer that you call a mind, you suspected her of having had an affair with every one of them. Except for one. Except for you. <laughs> you know, I often used to amuse myself thinking what Ivy would have done if you tried to touch her. Now you're going to go to Ivy's funeral if I have to drag you there. This is from my files. It survived his wrist after the break had healed. You see there? The break. And this is the wrist of the woman from the river. No break? No. What are you going to do, Carter? Right now? Nothing. Well, shouldn't the police and the Duncans know of this? I think they already do. Thanks, Doctor. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Thou wilt keep her in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because she trusted in thee. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thanks be unto God, who giveth us the victory.
was trying to tell you at the theater I don't work for Freddie Duncan. I wanted to talk to you about Ivy. I wanted you to tell me if you know any place where I could find her. Nah. I don't know who they're burying, but it isn't Ivy. How do you know that? Never mind, I just do. Now, do you have any idea where Ivy could be? All I know is, uh, Ivy called me at the theater one night a couple of weeks ago. Said she left Freddie. What'd she want? Money to get out of town. She had some jewelry and she wanted me to sell it or pawn it for her. She was afraid to do it herself because she knew that Freddie'd be looking for her. She didn't know what he might do to her. Where'd she call from? The Long Acre Hotel. The Long Acre? Yes, why? Never mind, go on. Well, Ivy asked me to meet her there, in the lobby. I went over after the last show and waited for two hours. No, Ivy. So I left. It's the last I heard from her. No, sir, no one by that name. Did you happen to be on duty two weeks ago Wednesday night? Two weeks Wednesday. Yes, yes, I was. Remember this woman that night in the lobby? Why, yes. Just a moment, sir. Let me see here. Davenport. Davenport? Mr. and Mrs. Philip Davenport of Terrytown. Yes, I remember. They checked in around 5 that afternoon. Then I should say shortly before midnight, Mr. Davenport came to the desk, paid his bill, and left. Did she leave with him? Well, I assume that she did. But did you see her? No. No, I didn't. You describe this Davenport? Well, it's always difficult, isn't it, sir? There was nothing distinctive about him. No, was he tall, short, medium? Well, I'd say medium. What color was his hair? Light, dark? Medium, as I recall. How old was he? I, I really couldn't say, sir. Well, 30, 40? Uh, approximately. Well, if, um, if you saw this guy again, would you recognize him? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd recognize him. Well, would you give me a call if you do see him? Uh, <clears throat> I'd be very glad to, sir. Thank you. Uh, Chelsea 6263, please. Hello? Hello, Roxy. Oh, Nick, where have you been? I've been calling all over for you. Yeah, well, I'm on my way, too. Listen, Nick, I have an important message for you from Bess Tucker. She says she wants to see you immediately. Hello, Bess. Hello, Carter. What can I do for you? Get Dan Keller. I'm listening. First, I have to ask you for a favor. I don't stick out my neck for anyone. Not even to square things for Lloyd. You... You haven't spoken to me. You haven't even seen me. All right? All right, Bess. About two weeks ago, Dan Keller came to see Lloyd and me. He was looking for Ivy. Everyone on the Tenderloin knew that. And he said that he'd found her the night before. Where? Well, he wouldn't say that. But he said that she offered him all of her jewelry. If he would let her go, just let her disappear. And he agreed? I think so. But he said he had to have a story that the Duncan family would buy. So he wanted Lloyd to haul up for two or three weeks while he spread the rumor that Lloyd and Ivy ran away together. You went along with him? Yes. When Keller wants a favor, he gets a favor. Come on, Bess. Well, that's it. The rest you can guess. And yours is that Keller killed Ivy for the jewelry? Yes. Then why would he take some floater out of the river and try and pass her off as Ivy? Nah, Bess. There's got to be more to it, man. Keller may be covering up a murder, maybe Ivy's murder. But if I know Dan Keller, there'd have to be more in it for him than Ivy's jewelry. Something big. 
Something real big, like maybe a pipeline to $50 million. $50 million? That's what Freddie Duncan's gonna be worth when the old man dies. That sounds more like Dan Keller. Nick, you get him. Nick, please. Get him. Come in, Neil. You said want to see me? Yes. I'm leaving tomorrow morning for London. London? Yes, I booked passage on the Mauritania, sailing at noon. Well, what about Father? Oh, I think he can die without my help. <laughs> Don't you? Oh, yes, I'm sure he can. But there's one thing I want to be sure of. Well, what's that? Well, in spite of Captain Keller's valiant efforts to place the blame for Ivy's murder on Lloyd Deems, I'm sure Father still suspects I killed her. And I'm just afraid he might decide at the last minute to punish me by cutting me out of his will. <sighs> I doubt it. I'll do better than that, Neil. Make absolutely certain. For your own benefit as well as mine. Now, what is that supposed to mean? When a man hires as many private detectives as I did to check up on Ivy, he gets a lot of odds and ends of information. A bit here, a bit there. And none of it means anything. <laughs> Until someone puts it all together. For instance? For instance? Well, for instance, that friend of Nick Carter's. The man who was killed, uh, Sam Bates, I think his name was. What about him? He was following Ivy. So I know you took her to the Long Acre Hotel the day she left. Bates phoned me from there. Oh, Ivy probably left innocently enough, but that's because she didn't know how you felt about her. You were just the understanding brother-in-law, helping the wife free herself from an impossible marriage. I don't imagine I've even knew you registered as man and wife. Did she? <laughs> yes, of course, I'd love one. I don't know exactly what happened at the Long Acre, of course. But I can make a fairly good guess, I think. Mm. <laughs> there you were, alone with Ivy. With all that feeling for her churning inside of you. Until it got just too much for you. <laughs> and so... Stop! Mm. <laughs> You said you used to amuse yourself by wondering what Ivy would do if I ever tried to, to touch her. Mm. <laughs> I'll tell you. I don't want to know. Mm. She was your wife, and I, I killed her. You don't even want to know why. I wouldn't have brought it up at all if I could have been sure Father wouldn't change his will. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me now, Neil. I don't want to be late for the theater. Nick, I got the proof that Keller killed Ivy. I'll pick you up at Fulton and South in an hour. All right, Bess, I'll be there. What you want this time? Nothing important. Mm. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Good night, Roxy. Good night.
Nick Carter. This is Edward Parsons at the Longacre. I promised to call you if I saw Mr. Davenport again. Have you? In a way, yes. There's a photograph of him in the final edition of the evening graphic. Hey, you. What are you staring hey, at? Hey, something's wrong with the tire. What are you talking about? Take a look for yourself. You're crazy. Nothing's wrong with this tire. <clears throat> Beth, what do you find out? Lucky you nailed him, Archie. Or he'd have had you for killing his friend Bates. Here, help me get him into the furnace. Six shots, Keller. You got any more bullets? I knew Keller was covering up something for you. But I thought you were trying to protect your brother. That you got Keller to take Ivy's body out of the Long Acre Hotel after Freddie had killed her. But when the desk clerk told me Mr. Davenport's photo was in the evening graphic, I knew he meant you. Your brother wouldn't have any reason to register under an assumed name with his own wife. Your father's asking for you. You'd better come. He's sinking very rapidly. I'll wait. Duncan. Where's Ivy's body? Captain Keller's men buried her. I don't know where. And you didn't ask?
Operator? Police headquarters central. Lieutenant Gorman, homicide, please. Nick, what shall I do with this? What? With this. File it. In what? What do you mean, in what? The file cabinet. We don't have a file cabinet. Well, then find one. All right, all right. Hey. What's that? It's nothing. Let's see. I, um, I bet you might want to keep that. That was nice of you, Roxy. Would you do me the honor of having lunch with me at Delmonico's? Oh, but what if the phone... Well, don't worry about the phone. Nobody calls a private detective on a rainy day, kid. 